Hey YouTube, it's your girl Dr. J and I thought I would come back and do a video and explain a little bit more about why I choose to use labels when I talk about education and I talk about educating my kids, including the gifted label. In order to understand why I use labels, it's important to, I think, for people to have an understanding of kind of what's driving that. We knew that my oldest was gifted you know, when he was really young. I mean, he just showed a lot of the signs that are associated with giftedness. We didn't know where he was on the spectrum, and that wasn't really a big issue for us. But when we first started to really talk, think about, okay, how are we going to educate this child? We started looking at all the options and different things like that. And we had, we, we had you know, done a lot of like background work on, on and research on gifted kids and that sort of stuff. And I mean, so we had done a lot of study on it and we knew that environment was important. And we had been warned that, you know, the, the further along your child is on the spectrum, the, the harder it is to find good educational fits. And so um, when it was time to really start thinking about what is going to be the, the educational path that we take for our children, our child, um, we, I reached out to the gifted coordinator for the county for, that we lived in. So this was the gifted coordinator for the public schools for the county that we lived in. And I was asking about the gifted program. And then I asked the question where I specifically said, how are students admitted into the program? And she told me that, well, most students have to test into the program. But for black children, we just have to see motivation. And I said, what? Why don't black children have to test into the program? And she said, if we ask black children to test into the program, we would have no blacks in the program. Black children cannot test high on an IQ test. Okay. That is what the gifted coordinator for the county in the district that I lived in at the time told me. Black children could not test into a program. And I said, well, you know, I have no problem testing my child. I'm, I'm, you know, if he can test into the program, fine, but I don't even want him in a program that he couldn't test into. And she said, you don't even have to worry about testing um, because we don't expect black children to be able to test high enough to get into the program. So don't even worry about testing your child. He just needs to show motivation. I was so offended by that. I was floored. Then when my husband and I finally did decide to test my son um, with a licensed psychologist who was qualified to give my son a nationally recognized, internationally normed test, we were you know, amazed by his results. He tested in the 99.8th percentile, which qualifies on the spectrum of highly to profoundly gifted. Okay, that's why I use that term. So then we ended up moving to a new state. And the state that we moved to, they didn't have, we knew they didn't have the strongest academic record. And when we tested my son, we were clearly told this kid is not going, you are not going to be able to go have this kid in a traditional academic setting. It's not going to work. So we moved to a new state and um, as we were looking at the state requirements, you know, we're like, okay, this, you know, it's not going to work. We're, we're, we're going to go with our homeschooling because, you know, not only are, is he gifted, but he also has dyslexia. So we need to make sure we have that balance. But there was something really disturbing about this state as well. And that is in this state, and I will link um, in the description box articles that you can see that it's not just my opinion, but this state has race-based standards for achievement in the public schools. Okay. They just recently passed those standards. There are lower standards for black children than there are for any other children in the system. 
Okay, so the public schools say that, you know, we expect a 98%, 93% achievement rate for white students, for Asian students. So Asian Pacific Islander students, we expect a 93% passing rate. That, that's what we want to achieve in the state. For white students, 91%. For Hispanic students, go into the 80s. For black students, 79%. The only group lower for expected achievement than black students, than black children, are children with severe mental handicap. The standards that are expected to be achieved for black students in this state are lower than for students with English as a second language. And guess what? The standards are so ridiculous that there is a different standard a higher standard if your child is biracial. So if they're mixed with anything other than just black, there's a higher standard. The reason why I use the label gifted with my children is because I have been told in more than one state that black gifted children don't exist. There is no such thing as a black gifted child. You guys have been seen. People on Facebook talk about, well, when I consider gifted, I think of people like Mozart. I, I picture people like Mozart. That's the stand, that, that's what is thought about. And it's not just an isolated opinion. That opinion is running rampant and it's institutionalized in academic standards in the area in which I live. And it's not just about race. People will tell you that you know, if you are lower socioeconomic status, oh, well, you know, we have lower standards because, you know, um, those children just, you know, we don't really expect much. And if somebody who's, you know, below the poverty level goes and, and says, you know, I think my child is gifted. <laughs> oh, yes, mm, sure. Your child may be bright, but you need some clinical evidence for gifted. And y'all know, I've told y'all, I have clinical evidence for my children being gifted. All three of my children have been tested with a licensed psychologist using nationally accepted, internationally normed tests. And people still say, mm -mm. now you may think your kids are gifted, but they're not. They don't look like Mozart. They don't look like this. And People, I have chosen to use this channel to let people know, guess what? There are gifted children that look like this. And I am there to be a voice for people who are saying, my, ch my child, there, there's something different about my child. I, I know my child is, is gifted and they're in a state like mine that says, mm, black, now nah, I don't think so. They're in a state like the, the one that I was in that said, black people can't pass an IQ test. Black people can't score high on IQ tests. It's just, you know, it's not going to happen. But hey, if little Johnny shows motivation, we'll just pass him along. We'll pretend that he's just as gifted as the other kids, even though we know he's not. There is a label that is already placed on children that are black children that are low socioeconomic status, children that are physically disabled. And when you say, well, you know, a child can be physically disabled and, and be gifted. <laughs> you, know, like, you know, I know you think that child is bright, but they're in a wheelchair. Well, I know you think that child is bright, but they're poor. They can't really be gifted. They don't have any clinical evidence. Those children don't exist. I'm here to say that, yes, black gifted children really do exist. And we're not going to hide and we're not going to um, make other people, you know, comfortable by pretending that they don't exist. I am using labels with my children because society has already labeled my children in the way that they see them. And I want to provide another voice out there that lets people know, yes, your child can be gifted. Yes, it is possible to have clinical evidence of your child being gifted. Now, the thing that I find so ironic is I never get pushback when I use the label of dyslexia for my children. 
Not once have, has anybody ever said, you know, people say their child is dyslexic, but do they really have clinical evidence that their child is dyslexic? No. Never get pushed back. Never get people making a video saying there's no such thing as, you know, dyslexic children. And there's this lady on there who keeps talking about dyslexic. And I just don't think her children are really dyslexic. Okay. Never. When I talk about auditory processing disorder, didn't get no push. No, I never get pushed back. Y'all will not believe the number of private messages that I get when I say gifted. People push back so much because they go, don't use that label. You're going to make people mad. Why would people get mad? Because I use a clinical term that is an accurate description of my children in one area, but don't get uncomfortable when I use an accurate clinical description in another area. If you're not offended by dyslexia, why are you offended by gifted? If you're not offended by auditory processing disorder, why are you offended by gifted? If you're not offended by sensory processing disorder, why are you offended by gifted? Why is it that it is absolutely okay for me to talk about the disabilities of my children and there's no pushback but when I talk about the abilities of my children people start to get a bit people start to get offended people start to say that doesn't exist she's in fantasy land she's making it up she thinks that's right she's pushing she wants that to be true but no they don't exist I am going to speak out for all the families who dealt with the same situation that I dealt with, where you're sitting with somebody who's supposed to be an expert, who is the, 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 the keeper, the coordinator of the gifted children, and they have the audacity to say, your child could never really be gifted because they're black. Or the people who say your child could never be gifted because they're poor. Or your child could never be gifted because they're disabled. Or your child could never be gifted because you got a divorce. Or because you don't have this or that. You don't look like whoever we say is the appropriate look for gifted. That's why I label. That's why I have this channel. That's why I talk about things in the way that I talk about things. Because if people are bold enough to sit there in my face and tell me black people can't score high enough on an IQ test because they're black. If I can have a state that determines that if a child is mixed with anything other than black, they are going to have a higher academic level of achievement than a child that's just black. If I'm going to be sitting in a state that has standards for achievement based strictly, solely, and only on race, then yes, I have just as much right to talk about giftedness. And I'm not going to back down on talking about giftedness because these people aren't backing down on talking about their belief that black people can't score high on an IQ test. They're not backing down on their belief that black children can't have the same standard of achievement as Asian or white or Hispanic or, or English as a second language. We are still dealing with the same nonsense that started with the bell curve and the separate but equal and all that other sort of stuff. And you know what? Sometimes you need somebody else out there on your side who says, you know what? I don't care what those people are saying. You have just as much right to your stance and your opinion as anyone else. So that's why I use labels. This is Dr. J and I'm out.